everyone, and welcome back to Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen, where we show you how to make easy, authentic Puerto Rican recipes. Today, we're going to be making the famous Puerto Rican codfish fritter known as bacalaitos. I know, say that three times fast. Now, I gotta confess, uh, when I was growing up in my age of youthful indiscretion, uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of bacalaitos. I think the, the fishy smell just kind of put me off and I was like, ah, I don't know. But don't worry. Now that I am older and uh, I would like to think, although many disagree, wiser, uh, I've come back to love them. I think it's the perfect combination of savory with that really salty cod and then you get it with a good sauce and it's just fabulous. It's the perfect thing to make for your friends for a great party. So let's get cooking. So here are the ingredients for today's recipe. First, front and center, we got our bacala. So this is a salted cod. You can find it in your grocery store. Um, if you can't find cod, you can also use salted pollock. Uh, it's about the same. It's actually probably a little bit cheaper. Um, but if you want the original, definitely go with the bacala. Uh, it's got a great flavor, uh, super yummy. Now this product uh, is basically fish that's been caught, filleted, deboned, and salted. Um, so that helps it be preserved and it gives it a particular taste. The downside is that it's super salty. Like if you chew on that, it's just like pure salt. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is reconstitute that. We're gonna boil it in some water. Uh, one, that helps it get a little bit more water into it since it's dried out. Uh, and two, it kind of tampers down on the salt. So we'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, then once we got our cod ready, we're gonna make our fritter. Uh, we've got some all-purpose flour. We've got some cornstarch. Uh, we've got some baking powder. Uh, and then to season it, we got some sofrito, uh, a little bit of achiote oil. Uh, this is just for the color primarily. I'm not using any sazon. Again, I'm trying to stay away from the MSG and the artificial colorings. So I'm using that. Uh, if you don't have any achiote oil, just substitute it for a packet of sazon or something with achiote in it. Uh, then we have some uh, pimiento morrone. Uh, these are just roasted red peppers that I've diced finely. Uh, some diced cilantro uh, and some dried oregano. And then obviously we're gonna add a little bit of water to make this into kind of a batter. It's almost like a, a thin pancake batter that will then fry. Um, one thing that you'll notice that's not in here is any type of salt. Um, that's because first, <laughs> the cod is super salty. Uh, and second, uh, we said we're gonna boil this, uh, and, but we're gonna reserve some of the water that we boil it in and we're gonna use that to salt it. Um, the reason for doing that is one, like, the salt's already there, but two, there's a lot of flavor in that fishy water that's boiled and it'll help kind of really bring out the codfish in the last fritter. Uh, so that's the fritter. Uh, and then last, we have the stuff for the sauce. Uh, we're gonna do kind of like a take on tartar sauce. Uh, I really like English fish and chips. Uh, and so this is kind of like a play on that with some Latin flavors. Um, so we'll get some mayonnaise, uh, we got some crushed garlic, uh, we got a little bit of lemon juice, and then some uh, capers that I finely diced. And so that'll all go into kind of like a tartar sauce if you have. It's gonna be great, I love it. Um, and so let's get cooking, guys. We're gonna start by reconstituting the dried cod. To do this, add 12 cups of water to a heavy saucepan and turn it on to medium heat. The amount of water you use will impact how salty the cod is, just because the more water you use, the more it dilutes the salt. I've found that 12 cups is about the right amount, but you can adjust as you see fit. Once you've added the water, add your dried cod and let it boil for one hour. If at the end of the hour, you think the cod is still too salty, you can drain the old water and boil it for another 20 minutes in new water. Once your cod is boiled, Use a ladle to reserve a couple cups of the boiling liquid. As I mentioned, we're gonna use this liquid to salt our batter and to boost the fish flavor in the final bacalaito. Save at least two cups. Once you've saved some of the water, drain your cod and rinse it with cold, clean water. This will help remove some additional salt 
and will also bring the temperature down to where you can work with it. Once your cod is cooled down, transfer it to a clean bowl and begin shredding it. Just use your fingers to break the big pieces of fish into small shreds. These pieces are going to go right into your bacalaito, so keep that in mind as you are determining what size to make your pieces. If you like big chunks of cod in your bacalaito, then leave the pieces pretty large. Otherwise, you can shred it smaller. As you are shredding your cod, be on the lookout for bones. This cod is technically deboned, but you never know if they missed any, and that wouldn't make a tasty bite. Now with the cod shredded, let's make our batter. In a large mixing container, add your cod, the achiote oil, the sofrito, the cilantro, the roasted red peppers, and the oregano. Then stir the ingredients to combine. Now add your liquid. First add one cup of the water we reserved from the cod. Then add another four cups of regular water and stir to combine. If you know you're gonna want your bacalaito more salty, you can substitute some more of the cod water for the regular water. Just keep the total amount of water to five cups. Now add your cornstarch and your flour. Then use a whisk to beat the batter until there are no more lumps. You want to make sure that all of the cornstarch and flour is thoroughly integrated. Once your batter is mixed, it should feel like a thin pancake batter or a really thick soup. It should have full body and coat the back of a spoon, but still float easily as you mix it. If you need to thicken your batter, just add another couple tablespoons of flour. If it's too thick, just add a little more water. Also, taste your batter for salt at this point and adjust if necessary. Once your batter is the right consistency, the last thing we want to do is add our baking powder and thoroughly mix it in. The baking powder reacts in the batter to create carbon dioxide bubbles, which ensure that your bacalaitos are light and fluffy. The effect will diminish over time as the baking powder exhausts its chemical potential, so don't add it until right before you are ready to fry your bacalaitos. Now let's fry our bacalaitos. I like to use a deep frying pan and add about one inch of oil in the bottom of the pan. Turn your stove on to medium high heat and bring the temperature of the oil to about 350 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer, you'll know the oil is ready when you drop a little bit of batter in and it immediately starts to bubble and float. Once your oil is hot, use a spoon to gently add batter about one third of a cup at a time to the hot oil. Because this batter is very wet, there will be a lot of steam escaping from your bacalaitos, leading to lots of bubbles and potential for splashing oil, so be careful. This is why I like to use a frying pan with high sides, so be careful as you're frying these. Once your bacalaito has solidified, I like to flip it so it starts to cook on the other side as well. Then flip your bacalaito every 15 to 30 seconds until it's golden brown on both sides. When it's done, pull it out of the fryer and lay it on paper towel to drain. Between each bacalaito, I like to use a small metal strainer to remove any of the smaller pieces of batter that fell into the oil. If you just leave these in your oil, they will eventually burn and give your oil a bad taste. There's no way to avoid these drops of batter, but at least you can prevent them from messing up the next bacalaitos. As you fry your bacalaitos, you'll notice that the way you add them to the oil can make a big difference. If you gently add your batter, it will tend to stick together and form a smaller, but thicker, bacalaito. In contrast, if you move your spoon as you're adding the batter, you'll get a bigger, but thinner bacalaito. It's really a personal preference for how you like your bacalaito, so just experiment and see what works best for you. No matter how you like your bacalaito, the basic pattern is the same. Add your batter to the hot oil, then begin flipping the bacalaito once it's solid enough to flip. Keep flipping it from time to time until it's fully cooked and golden brown. Then remove your bacalaito and strain out any stray chunks of batter. And no shame in trying some of your delicious creations as you're frying them. They're always best right out of the fryer.
With our bacalaitos fried, I want to show you how to make a super easy but extremely delicious sauce to go with your bacalaitos. Just mix together some mayonnaise, some lemon juice, some garlic, and some minced capers and stir it all together to combine. Now you're ready to dig in. So there we have it, bacalaito. These are ready to eat and they look delicious. Now, uh, before I chow in, I wanna point out a couple differences. Now, you may have seen it while we're frying, but there's kind of a various shapes that you can make depending on how you spread the batter into the pan. I wanna, so here's one, right? So this one is kind of long and you notice it's a lot thinner. Um, when I drop the batter in, I kind of move the spoon forward so it spreads it out a little bit more and you get a thinner, crispier um, bagalaito. I really like these. They get a great crisp crunch uh, and they just eat very... Oh, yeah. But some people are more into kind of the, the pillowy, fluffy ones. So like this one, for example, you'll notice it's a little bit thicker. Uh, it's a little rounder. There I just kind of dropped the batter in slowly and let it kind of sit there so it all stays together. And so this one that's not as crunched, it's a little bit doughier. Um, so crisp around the edges, but doughy on the inside. A lot of people like it, like it's, it's great, it's very tasty. Um, I'm just a huge fan of the crunch. So, so just think about that when you're kind of adding the batter into the oil. You can change it that way. Um, the other thing I want to point out here that's really the star of this recipe, which you wouldn't think of, is the baking powder. Um, you'll notice that I kind of mentioned about adding it just at the end because you really want it to be strong. Because what the baking powder does is add a bunch of air into, into the batter by uh, some chemical reaction. Um, and then you get a fluffier batter so when you fry it, it doesn't all get all stuck together and like hard. Um, instead, you have kind of either a pillowy, soft, or like rounder one, like the, the small one, or a nice and crisp kind of one with the wide one. So in either case, the baking powder is doing a lot of work there. I, I actually tried, I've tried without baking powder sometimes because I was like, oh, what does it actually do? And it's, it's rough. It's really like rubbery and, and tough. So don't do that. Make sure you add the baking powder. And again, try to add it as close to frying as possible so it's still really active. Okay. Um, so I've only tried one thing. I've got the, the bacalaito. Want to try it with the sauce. Um, oh yeah. Again, I'm not, this is my own creation. I'm sure somebody's done something similar so I don't take full credit, but I wouldn't say that this is like super traditional, but it is a great combination. I think the acid from the lemon juice in the sauce really helps to cut down the fat in the fried thing. So you get a much more balanced um, balanced feel in the mouth. Also the, the saltiness from the capers really highlights the saltiness of the cod and it just works really well together. Mm, so good. Now, I think I made, looking over at where the other ones are, I made like 12 bacalaito. And I don't think I used even like half of the batter. So be forewarned that the recipe amount is, is, is very large. Um, I created the recipe for the purpose of using a pound of cod because that's like how they sell the packages in. But in reality, um, you could get away with, with halving the recipe, doing a quarter of the recipe if it's just for you and your family. So keep that in mind when you're kind of uh, deciding how to make it, that if you make the full recipe, you're gonna have a lot of bacalaito, which there's never a problem as long as you get enough people to eat them, um, but just keep that in mind. Um, and so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the recipe. You should really try it. These are fabulous. Um, again, I, I was once as a child foolishly put off by the fishiness, but now I'm just a real big fan. Uh, and so I hope you guys give it a shot. Make it for yourself, make it for your family. Make it for your friends. Uh, they're going to love you because of it. And if you love this video as much as I did, because I love Bagaito, hit the like button, subscribe to us, come back next week, and we'll, we'll show you guys another recipe. We're really excited about sharing Puerto Rican food with you guys, and we want to hear about your experiences, so drop a comment below. We'll see you again in another episode of Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen.